So when we talk about planning or scheduling, we talk about resources. A resource can be a piece of equipment or it can be a, a person. This very much depends on how you work as a business. So we class equipment as the guy is stood at that machine being fed work irrespective of the customer or the job. The equipment is the resource. If the guy picks up a piece of raw material, takes it to the first um, process, undertakes the first process, does the same with the second process and moves around with the material, then that guy is the resource. So how do we create a resource? So we go into admin and we create a new resource. And we'll call this resource John Smith. We then create operational descriptions. They can be very generic, like my example there, or they can be process specific. We put in there an hourly cost, ticket as active. We now set what we call availability rules. So in our example, we will make this resource available every weekday from 8 a.m. until 4.30 p.m. We now create what we call unavailable rules. So for example, this is unavailable every weekday between 12.30 and 1 p.m. So the yellow block represents the availability for this resource. We can set unavailable rules to cover things like the guy is off next week, the machine is down for maintenance, or as you can see this resource is simply not available on a Saturday or a Sunday. When we look at our scheduled operations we can see that we have 33 live scheduled operations of which 17 are currently overdue. Clicking on the 33, we can see every operation that is loaded on our schedule. This screen as a list can be very informative. So for example, we currently have 1,015 hours loaded onto our schedule that covers all resources, of which 36 hours has already been undertaken. We could then sort this by resource by clicking on any of the column headers or we could filter and look at a particular resource or group of resources to see the planned hours. We should also be looking out for blue numbers in the time taken column. This is advising the user that we have already exceeded the estimated time for that particular process. Now we're going to look at how we load operations onto the schedule. So the first thing we do is we look at the date required by the works order. We now decide in complete isolation to everything else that's happening on the shop floor when we would like to get these operations done. In our example we'd like to get the packing and dispatch done by the 30th. Fred is going to do the welding by the 26th and we're going to do the milling by the 12th. The system is giving me an expected completion date on the operation based on all the other processes within that resource. In our example we have two operations that are not going to be complete in time for the works order completion date. A quicker alternative for me to load these onto the schedule is to go into action and schedule all. What schedule all will do is it works back from the works order required date and back calculates from the final operation backwards using both the estimated time which calculates the expected date to be complete. So we're now going to look at sequencing these operations. We don't want to be in a position where we're actually packing and inspecting it before we've actually welded it. To do this we're going to sequencing and we can see clicking sequential steps puts it in a chronological order. By clicking visual, we now get this representation of how this job is scheduled. What this means is if we take this top operation and move it to the right, i.e. make it later, 
all the following operations move in sequence. Note as Fred Smith bumps up to the packing and dispatch process making that also move to the right. So we can move operation 1 left but of course as soon as we move it right it has an impact. On this particular job and we're talking about Fred Smith we've asked for the operation to be done on the 30th however it's going to be done on the 31st and if you want to explore that we click on the magnifying glass at the side of the resource that takes us through to that resource and here's where we see where this job is being processed in that timeline so looking at Fred Smith as the resource I suppose the most obvious thing there is all the availability that Fred currently has the next thing we notice is the expected date is red it's red it is past the requested date as Fred's got the availability I'm simply going to take the brown blocks and slide them to the left to pull it within the time frame required. This is very simple to do on our example. We have just one job to this one resource. Obviously as we start sliding these in a normal resource it's going to impact on other jobs. On our works order here we're going to try and tattle the expected date being over the required date for the works order. We can see there we've got the potential to move the first operation to the left. That allows me to pull the packing and dispatch to the left i.e. earlier. It is now no longer red because it's within the date required for the works order. Let's go back to our schedule, our 38 scheduled operations we're now looking at the visual planning board for the entire factory but let's take a particular interest in our laser machine we're now looking at a single resource our laser and as we can see quite a few of our expected dates are red they are potentially going to be late I can manipulate these lines by taking the line and moving it to the top of my list now making the top line black, i.e. on time, the one below it is now late red. The system very accurately and in real time calculates not just the finished date but the time that this process is due to be finished. What it uses to make this prediction, it takes the estimated time of the process, it deducts any time already spent on it, it uses the availability that we have given this resource and it projects forward when this operation is due to be completed. I can drag operations within this resource and as I do it affects the expected completion date on the right hand side. You can see from my example I have just one job that is potentially going to be on time. All the others are late. I could select this by requested date in which case the system will put it as close to the requested date as possible. Another alternative is to use the compact left. This effectively stacks every job to the left one behind the other. My objective is to get as many dates on the right hand side black as possible by using these methods. You can see there by me selecting that line and moving it up it does eventually become black. Now selecting line 6 moving it up until it turns black. We're now looking at the planning board with everything that we have scheduled. I may decide that I will just want to see the, the next week. I select the week. I can zoom in and out of that as well. I might just want to look at one day at a time, see what we've got on for the next couple of days. Okay, hitting the day. I've still got the ability on this screen to slide jobs and hopefully fill all of my availability. When I click on any of the colored blocks, not only does it show me the path of this particular job, it also highlights the works order at the bottom of the screen that I can very quickly click through and see the job in its entirety. If you want to look for a particular job that you've loaded onto the schedule, we use the filters. So in our example, I'm going to search for works order 1785. Update and there the job appears. 
So here is our job set sequentially on the planner. As I move that first operation right, the following ops move in line. The scheduling planner is designed as a visual tool to highlight well in advance any late operations, potential bottlenecks, underutilized resources. With the added benefit of it being live reflecting what is happening on the shop floor currently.